I'll discuss on track speed skating, track profiles, and ideal lines. We'll use uh, physics to discuss this. And we start by recalling what the century till force is. So to keep a rider on a circular track, we need a force because the velocity of the rider, which we'll suppose constant in length, does change as he moves around the track, it changes direction and therefore the velocity changes. Since the velocity changes, there's an acceleration and since there's an acceleration, there's a force. You can clearly see from the drawing that the force has to be towards the center of the track. So this is the centripetal force that is necessary to keep the rider on his course. So let's calculate its uh, strength. So if we think about the circle, a part of the circle, then we see that the position of the rider changes. Initially it corresponds to this position and then it corresponds to that position. And the difference between these vectors is the change in position. We call this change in position delta r, this vector. We can divide it by the radius of the track. Clearly, if we think about the velocity, it's perpendicular to this position at both times. In fact, the difference of the velocity vectors, if I redraw the second vector near the first one, let me draw this a little bit bigger, so we'll have the first vector and the second one will be slightly displaced. And there's a difference in the velocity vector. And if we divide it by the size of the velocity, then we will find that these two are equal. It's easy to convince yourself of this. Up to a 90 degree rota rotation, which I'll ignore in my explanation. This is because the position vector is orthogonal to the velocity vector. So then if we derive this with respect to time, what we'll get is the position vector changes with time, but the radius doesn't. So up to a 90 degree rotation again, we'll get the equation that the change in the position compared to the change in time or compared to the change in time of the velocity vector are related as such, which leads to the equation that the velocity divided by the radius of the track is equal to the acceleration of the skater divided by his or her velocity. So in other words, the centripetal acceleration is the velocity squared of the rider divided by the radius of the track. So this is our first result that we need. This is the centripetal acceleration. Second result, the second observation is that we always have the rider riding in the gravitational field, pulling the rider down towards the ground. 
So the rider will necessarily uh, feel two forces. One force is m times the acceleration on Earth, which we typically call g, and a centripetal force, which we've just computed to be of strength v square over the radius of the track. So the rider will necessarily fear, feel a force, which is the sum of these two. And the ideal track is such that the rider is completely stable. The track is orthogonal to this force. So this is the ideal track profile for the rider. So it depends on the Earth's gravitational field. It depends on the velocity of the skater. And it depends on the radius of the track. So now we can compute the angle that this track makes with the ground, this angle. And for those of you who know some geometry, it will not be surprising that we find that the tangent of the angle is equal to the ratio of the horizontal and vertical uh, components of the force. Force, of course, is the mass of the rider times v squared over r, and the mass drops out in this equation. So this is the angle. And we can give some example calculation. So if we have a rider skater who goes at about 50 meters per second, which is about 50 kilometers per hour. And if we have a radius of the track, which is about 25 meters, And we know that the Earth's gravitational field is nothing but uh, about 10 meters per second square. And we can calculate that the tangent of the angle of the track has to be 15 square divided by 25 divided by 10, which is about 1. And therefore, the angle of the track would have to be about 45 degrees because that's when the tangent is 1. These is, of course, these are crude approximations. So we want our track to be tilted. So here is a side remark. What if you have difficulty making the track tilted? For instance, if your track is on ice. Well, ice is of water typically lies horizontally so you can have a nice track which is round but you, it's difficult to make slopes so if you cannot make slopes so it's very difficult to keep uh, the rider in balance and in fact uh, you can get an olympic gold medal just by um, staying upright fact that this is not an exaggeration uh, was demonstrated by Stephen Bradbury. I recommend that you look up this uh, remarkable story. So far for speed skating on ice. Now, 
the way tracks are typically built or were typically built is as follows put a track where the riders go straight the track profile is basically flat and then where the riders have to take the turn your track profile will be slanted and the angle of the track is adapted to the maximal speed that the, that the riders or skaters typically reach on these tracks so for instance a professional a track for professional athletes will be tilted more than a track for amateurs now as you go from the flat profile to the slanted profile you will gradually increase the angle and this is how tracks are typically built but we can see a number of problems with this which is that uh, which are that uh, not all skaters not not all skaters have different have the same speed in all races so the speed can depend on an extremely an extremely high number of variables like the distance of the race uh the skater the uh time in the race the moment in the curb etc cetera, etc cetera. so as v changes the ideal angle of the track changes the g doesn't change The traditional track has a constant theta v changes so the only thing a rider can try to adapt is to be is the radius but we can see the problem with this the track is quite long and the skater has only a very limited ability to change his radius by being either lower or higher on the track so we can only change r by a little this is the problem so these were the old track profiles there are new track profiles which are better suited for more riders and for more types of races. These new tr track profiles, they will not have a constant slant. But they will have a curved slant, so it will gradually go up. The advantage of this is that now the angle depends on where the where the skater chooses to ride. So now the skater has a direct handle on the angle theta itself so this is a huge advantage for the skater And the skater can try to optimize the angle depending on his velocity. Now these tracks are sometimes called parabolic 
because it resembles a little more a parabola. But in fact, a profile can be anything according to the rules of uh, track building. So it's not necessarily a parabola. And the profile of the track is important because depending on the profile, Uh, you have more or less space at the given angle theta. And so the more space you have dedicated to a given angle theta, the more space you have dedicated to skaters that go at that velocity. Now, what are ideal lines for skaters? Well, we see it's a very difficult problem. We can have a track. In a traditional track, the skater might arrive at high velocity and might choose in the corner, might choose to be high up there in order to um, lower the radius and therefore um, be able to go at a higher speed. So you might go high up there, then like descend to the middle and maybe come out of the curb low because he has lost velocity and then go back high up there and then go in the curb and then go back high up there. You might do it like this. Now note that it's important that skaters only um, skate one way such that, in fact, uh, the ideal line is not uh, mirror symmetric. Now, this is on a traditional track, but on a parabolic track, the skater has much more possibilities. Because he can, for instance, uh, attack at a higher velocity and just be higher up where there is now a possibility to compensate for his centripetal force and then uh, and then as he loses velocity go down again but he can for instance choose to attack at a higher velocity because he has more angle to play with etc etc so in a parabolic course or a track with a parabolic profile, there's uh, many more possible lines which are close to ideal. And then <clears throat> for each track, there will be a, give, a, a unique profile which dedicates uh, more or less space to skaters going at a certain velocity. So this becomes very track individual. In other words, with contemporary tracks, contemporary, yeah, tracks, or track profiles called hyperbolic, sorry, parabolic, uh, will require an individual adaptation to each track. <clears throat> 
such that on-site training is indispensable. for these original new profiles.